In this episode, we are talking how not to record cinematic videos. I see people doing the same mistake over and over and over and they never improve their videos. Their friends around them are like, hey man, your video is damn awesome. I don't understand why you're not getting famous. Don't take me wrong. When I watched my videos two years ago, I am cringing. They're so fucking bad. But two years ago, I was like, my videos are awesome. I'm like the next Peter McKinnon. Why the fuck I'm not getting followers and views? Uh, guess why? Because your videos are not as good as you think they are. So in this episode, I'll check five common mistakes everybody does, but thinks that he's awesome. If you don't know my name, it's Gabriel and make sure to remember it because my grandma told me that I'll be the next YouTube star and my grandma is never wrong. Now let's jump to the first mistake, movement. There is no movement in your videos. There are two types of movement here. The model movement, the subject and the camera movement. And most of the time what people will do is to grab their phone, the subject, oh my light died. First we have to fix the cinematic light, I cannot record like that. Okay, that took a little bit longer than expected because I don't have any power outlets in that part of the room, so I had to bring the light here. Now let's come back to the phone movement. So most of the people will just grab the phone, the subject will be in front of them, and maximum what they'll do is to pan left to right or up and down. Or even worse, they'll press the record button and they'll start wobbling the phone all around. The first thing, when you record cinematic video, you have to do nice, slow, steady movements. No jerkiness, no fast movements. Everything should be nice and tight, like drone is flying, not like but nice, smooth, steady shots. I have a whole video explaining how to do the cinematic movements. Check it out here. Now let's come back to model movements. If you have subject in front of the camera, the subject should move in a cinematic way. If you have the most cinematic movement with the camera, but the subject is acting goofy in front of the camera, your video will be ruined. So you have to align in advance what the subject should do, your talent, and how you're gonna move. The talent shouldn't think about the camera, the talent should act in front of the camera. Now, if you record your kids or you're a videographer who has to record kids, you cannot make the kids act in front of the camera. There you have to play with the emotions. So somebody should create some positive emotion in the kids. If you're not really good working with kids, hire some assistant or make the parents to help you. With the kids, you have to capture the emotion. So there is a little bit different. So to fix that mistake, start moving. Grab your phone and introduce some movement in your videos. Without movement, the videos are damn boring and that's one of the reasons why many people struggle with uh, their cinematic videos. The second most common mistake are the phone settings. First, you have to record always in the most high resolution possible. Nowadays, that's 4K. If you have 8K, I wouldn't recommend you to record in 8K. The files are too huge. 4K is more than enough, but make sure you record in 4K. Don't record in 1080p. I've seen so many people, even that they have 4K, they still record in 1080p. The quality difference is really high. Second, make sure you turn on the grid lines on the phone. The grid lines are there to guide you. Use the rule of third, how it works. You have two horizontal and two vertical lines. Where the lines are overlapping, position your main subject. That will improve your composition dramatically. If you record the horizon, don't put the horizon in the middle, put it on one of the lines. If you have a talent in front of the camera or position the talent in the dead middle of the composition or put the talent on one of the lines. And like that, easy busy, your composition is improved dramatically. You can thank me by putting like under the video. Next, record in 60 frames per second. Most of the modern phones allow you to record in 4K 60 frames per second. When you record in 60 frames per second, you have the possibility to slow down the footage two times. If you slow down the footage two times, it will look a little bit more dreamy, the jerkiness from your hands will be dramatically reduced and the video will look really smooth. The next problem is the exposure and I have two things here for you. Very often, if you press the record button, the iPhone will do amazing job auto-exposing the environment, especially if you go from dark room outside. 
but there are some 20% of the cases where the iPhone will do terrible jobs. I had some really weird videos where the iPhone was constantly micro adjusting the exposure and you can see it as a small flicker. The whole scene is getting a little bit darker, a little bit whiter and that thing is flickering like crazy. It's really nightmare when you have such type of video. So to prevent the iPhone of auto exposing and uh, those exposure flickers, make sure to lock the exposure before you press the record button. That will improve your videos dramatically. The next exposure mistake I see very often is the sky. Very often people overexpose the sky. What does it mean to overexpose? In the moment the sky is white and you don't see any clouds in the sky, that means that the sky is overexposed. Usually the phone algorithm is trying to expose for everything. It's trying to expose for the shadows, it's trying to expose for the highlights and it's becoming a mess. So very often in situations when you have sunlight or sunset, the image will be overblown. It's better to have the golden sky but the subject to be darker than to have your subject and then the sky to be completely blown. Try to pay attention to the sky and what I would recommend you is to expose always for the light. That means click the sky and lock the exposure on the sky. After that on post-production you can always bring a little bit of the shadows up and you still have some information there. But you cannot bring the highlights down, you'll never have blown highlights information back. Exposed for the highlights, your image will look more professional. Third mistake I see extremely often is that people forget about the foreground. People don't insert the foreground in their videos or in their photos. When you go to an epic location, most of the time you get overwhelmed how beautiful is the location and you want to capture it. But it's better to take a step back and try to capture as well a foreground element. Maybe it can be a tree, maybe it can be a bench or you can just bring the phone down closer to the ground. When you have a foreground element, your video will have more depth and you will introduce the parallax effect. If you have a tree for the foreground, I have an orange tree, and you have your background, in the moment you start moving your phone, the foreground will move much faster than the background and will create a parallax effect and that's what will create depth in your image. The fourth mistake is the variety of shots. Very often people will record only one type of shots and only one angle. So first you have to play with the angles. You have to record from multiple angles. Record one time behind the subject, record one time in front of the subject, record one time from the side of the subject. Like that you build variety. Next you have the angles. You can record from eye level, you can record from belly level or you can record close to the ground. Plus you can combine it with the variety of shots. First you need an establishing shot. You have to show the environment. Second you need some close up of the subject, what the subject is doing. And third, you need some macro shots, some flowers or something what the subject is doing, tightening his shoe, driving a bicycle, holding the bicycle. You make your video richer when you have the variety of the shots. Nowadays the phones come with two or three lenses, so use the ultra wide angle for the establishing shot. Use the regular lens because the quality is better for your subject shots and the macro shots. And if you're lucky enough to have enough money to buy the high-end phones, you have the third portrait lens. So you can use the portrait lens for some really close-ups of your subjects. Utilize all the lenses of your phone. If you don't have three lenses, try to get creative with the lens you have on your phone. Believe me, it's possible. That is the only way how your videos can become richer and to look more cinematic. You have to record a variety of shots, variety of different angles, variety of positions, and a variety of the shot types. I just remembered one more variety mistake. People don't record time lapses. It's so damn easy to record a time lapse slash hyperlapse with your phone. Just press the time lapse button, press record and start walking towards something or record how the plane is taking off and flying in the sky. That will spice up so much your videos. My travel videos look so good because I'm constantly recording those type of time lapses. They really make my videos richer and people are really impressed by them but I don't see very often people doing it and it's so damn easy. The fifth mistake is light. People don't pay attention to the light. If you film during the day, very often you get raccoon eyes. Just put some sunglasses and you fix the raccoon eyes and it will look 10 times better. If you film at night, just buy some of those small RGB lights and shine your subject. You'll be surprised what the long exposure of the iPhone is capable to do with those small lights. I could make photos of the star and of my girlfriend at the same time with the fucking phone. 
That's unbelievable. You can do portraits of a subject and to capture the stars in the sky at the same time. Just invest in RGB light. If you want to learn more about light, go and check out my, one of my videos here. Now, those were the most common mistakes I see over and over. And believe me, I do them as well. You know how many times I came back, dropped the footage, opened the editing software, and I realized that I don't have enough footage, that I didn't shoot enough. So better overshoot than undershoot. Very often I end up with not having enough footage to fill some small gaps. I don't have enough details. I didn't record enough flowers. I didn't record enough bugs. I didn't record enough white shots but I over-recorded how my talent is moving back and forth and how she's spinning around. So it really sucks doing one of those mistakes. That's why I created the video, because I wanted to point them out to help you not to do the same mistakes, not to do the same mistakes I've done. Now, don't forget to smile. I hope that video was helpful. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and see you in the comment section.